All right, ladies and gentlemen, big thank you to ZPs. He was actually able to hook me up with the replay from the third place match. So we know that these teams did not go to finals. They were able to get all the way to the semis, but they lost, obviously, to Cloud9 and uh, Glorious. So Evil Geniuses and ESP Wildfire, they did need to duke it out for the seeding points here for the cup number eight. And, well, uh, it's actually not a best of three. I don't know why it says that. Damn, there we go. Uh, back to best of ones. But uh, yeah, so I have the draft because this new draft tool is accessible even after the draft is done, which is amazing. And we have the map. It will be Curse Hollow, the competitive map, essentially, as a lot of teams really do like the, the just bigness of it. There's a lot of hero picks that you can do, a lot of different strategies. And uh, you know, the tributes, not bad. They've, they've iterated it over, over the years. The very first version of Curse Hollow brought buildings to half hit points and they couldn't fire back yeah think about that for a moment but uh, we do have the draft so i'm going to simulate it here as we talk about it and we're going to have ourselves a third place match best to one and again thank you so much to the teams for supplying the replay i've been told that uh, first pick was evil geniuses which is fitting because they were team blue anyways so that works out very nicely and they went with the stitches band so Again, this is his map. A lot of people used to like Stitches a lot on this map. He's now, right now, as of this time of the casting, he is literally the first pick material for almost every map. You go to Hero League, it's first pick Stitches, first pick Stitches, unless people don't know what they're doing, uh, which is actually really fun, if that is the case. Flip side, though, Nazebo ban. That's the first time we've seen the Witch Doctor actually banned out, especially on this map, and because uh, we just saw the double siege maneuvers from Glorious, and it did not work whatsoever. So having a Nazebo on this map, not exactly like the biggest of deals, but um, they ban him out anyways. And that leads us into a first well pick, met, Vala. So with the Tychus global band, Vala has definitely risen the ranks today. She has been consistently first pick uh, from both sides. If it's not her, it's usually the Tassadar. And well, funny that I say that because damn, Tassadar hey, is gonna be the big pick up here from Wildfire. So. Tassadar and the oh, Arthas, that's, um, again, very typical. We've actually seen this combo repeatedly today, going with the Arthas and the Bruiser on the Tassadar. He still has a very good place here in the meta, but uh, he's just not the end all to, you know, killing you, so to speak. Evil Genius is very early in their draft. They go for a melee assassin. They go for the Kerrigan. Very curious. Um, I'm not entirely too sure who's actually going to be playing that. A name does not come to my mind with these some of these new rosters for a Kerrigan. But picking up a Kerrigan this early, like you have to have a plan behind it. And it's not going to be a Zeratog because you're not going to pair up the two of them. Uh, but it will actually be the next pick for a Brightwing. So the mobility factor, the healing factor, not a big surprise. She is one of the, the if not the, she's one of the best supports you can put on this map. And of course, uh, the other mobility factor is the false dad. So he falls the way to the second round of picks here for Wildfire. And they're going to pair it up with a Malfurion, not an Uther. Curious about that one, because an Uther for the counter engage on top of the Kerrigan combo. I mean, she's going to rake, you just put off a good Divine Storm, and uh, you can actually interrupt that. But then they're going to opt to go for Malfurion. So is it going to be a silence? I wonder will be Tranquility. You've been seeing more and more Tranquilities lately uh, with the solo support build coming up from a lot of teams. So you just, you know, cups of a thousand, or the jugs of a thousand cups, Tranquilities, uh, Blink Heals have now been picked up more and more this patch instead of uh, the Emerald Wind resets. Although I hear Blink Heals like the thing to do in Europe, but of course this is NA. Uh, so flip side, a very late Red tank Red pick, Red. but it will be the Tychus. We're not going to have the Bash Brothers ready to go from the SP Wildfire. I feel they didn't really need to pick up a Malfurion right there. Like, there was no danger Evil Geniuses was going to take the Malfurion away from them, even if they took the Uther. Like, you still have Malfurion in the back pocket. Either support would have worked out fine. I think they missed a good opportunity here to put the Bash Brothers together. If you have a good front line, I mean, it's really hard for the Kerrigan to just engage, and especially the comp lockup of the Judgment, of the Shields from Terio, as well as uh, the Arthas Howling Blast, the Tempest coming out from there. I think that would actually would have been a much better pick to rob the tank ability there from Evil Geniuses, but alas, it did not work. And a Rainer to go on the back of that, our second Rainer of the day. So a lot of big burst with the triple Assassin comp out of Evil Geniuses. Will that work out for them? Time will tell. Now, we talk a lot about picks, the viability, and sometimes people come along 
and they shake up the meta. When the Sergeant Hammers were first picked, we're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then they worked. And it's like, yeah, Sergeant Hammers. People started doing it. Zagara as a, used as an assassin and a split pusher instead of a push, uh, instead of like just main siege damage. And Azebo coming back in on the back of the Jaina patch. A lot of changes. But one change that we haven't really seen is that people played with Jaina the first week, and we didn't really see her past that until now. ESV Wildfire brings out the Jaina. You need a ranged assassin, and when it came down to it, every other option was taken. So they went Jaina. Um, I can tell you from that one week where I saw Jaina played a lot, Kerrigan absolutely wrecked her. She has the gap closer, she has the CC combo level 13, she has the CC combo again. That is bad news. If Jaina doesn't go into improved ice block or some kind of defensive maneuver, or they can't just deal with the Kerrigan, like just keep her at bay, well, you're going to have a bad time. So I'm a little curious, which way is this going to go? Both comps running uh, between them, five assassins, no siege here. And of course, we do got uh, the Malfurion there for the support. We got the Brightwing for the support, shields and bruiserdom coming out from the Tassadar. It's harder for me to actually call this one at draft. The last few games a little bit easier because I'm not entirely too sure as to some of the synergies here. If Jaina continually gets caught out, if Malfurion continually gets caught out and they don't have ice blocks, it's going to be bad news bears for them. But if they can survive through the burst and the tranquility comes out big, you can actually flip this on top of Evil Geniuses. So going into this, Cursed Hollow is going to be the map, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Third place match. Go for Heroes America's Cup number eight. And we're going to be jumping into this one. Buttons to hit. Buttons to hit. There we go. All right, so on your left-hand side, you might know some of these team members. It's been a while since I've personally been able to cast some of uh, Evil Geniuses until this weekend, but Evil Geniuses in the blue, Faye, LZ Gamer, Kawhi Rice, Idra there uh, on the Rainer, should have actually called that. ZP's on the Kerrigan. That's why I'm drawing a blank, because ZP's is on the Kerrigan. That's why. Uh, so either way, flip side though, ESV Wildfire, definitely the stronger of the ESV teams. They've made themselves known. They're in a lot of these leagues. Uh, they did actually start off in their own ESV league, but Bims, Iacona, Pickles, Wargreymon, and Poom. Definitely names that we've seen a lot in some of these tournaments over the years, uh, <clears throat> over the years, over the months. <laughs> we're almost up to a one-year anniversary. As a note, the time of this casting, we're just outside February, and February was one we all got invited to the Alpha this time last year. Uh, Heroes Fire is actually now over a year old, um, so happy birthday to them. Talents, give me more on the Rainer, who's uh, going to be holding down Fort here in the bottom lane with ZPs and crew. Sweeping Grass, Purge Evil, Bribe on the Brightwing, and uh, Composite Arrow, very likely just the big multi-shot build here from Faye. Flip side, though, uh, we do got the power throw here from Bim, so it's not going to be the mobility and a bribe combo from the false daddy is going to go for the range, keeps them a bit safer at range, especially with the Kerrigan on the field. But Deep Chill coming out. Uh, I did not mute game sounds. There we go. Mute, mute, muted no longer. We could do that some game sounds. Sorry about that. Uh, deep Chill coming out. So increases the slow of 35%. So with the power throw, I'm curious to see if we're going to see a hammering there. We just saw um, hammering and the cripple hammer. <laughs> Look at that. Finds him. Uh, from Dunk Train in our last match. So I'm curious to see uh, what kind of hammer build we're going to get, or if it's going to be just a bit more static here with the lightning, with the level uh, 7 and 13 talents. Yeah, we'll find out. Ponderous Pursuit on the Malfurion, not a bad way to go. Malfurion really low. He actually had a visit here from ZPs, uh, the Queen of Blades, the Tooth Fairy to some. And uh, she came up for that gank. And in terms of experience, just a little more of an edge going the way here of Evil Geniuses. So they will be level four faster. In fact, they're about half a level difference. I'm curious how that actually happened. Who is not soaking their lanes? Everybody has actually been in their lanes. So I'm a little curious as to how we got that advantage. There's been no deaths, no real big pressure, but either way, there we go, level four. Maybe it was just literally they cleared out creeps faster because now we're catching up very quickly. There we go. So that makes a lot more sense. Level four with the advanced optics. We didn't go season marksman. For the Rainer, now that I think about it. So, no season for him. He's going to be auto attacking as per normal. Pickles losing a little bit more of his fights here with uh, LZ Gamer, but Kawhi Rice went, got himself uh, that watchtower. Boom, just going to take it on back. So, no real big surprises there. Arsenal, protective retribution in Venom. 
Nothing really out of the ordinary. The roaming Kerrigan with Venom, very standard these days. Uh, not really looking for those big packed punches this time. There's nobody really to pair the Kerrigan with. Nobody's roaming with him either. And uh, they jump on top of Poom, but they don't get a kill. Sail of V doesn't. Uh, I mean, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Either way, healing ward from the task of our gathering power. Arcane intellect trait returns mana. So Jaina's going for mana return at level four. Not too confident on that one, but uh, either way, that's what she's going to do. We got the Envenom on the Arthas, Protective Shield on the Malfurion, and not the Contest. It will actually just be Evil Geniuses taking on the early game tribute. Nice Root coming out there from the Iacona. He is going to save himself out from the ZP's LZ Gamer combo. Pickles was there as well to help him out with his shields and uh, didn't actually drop the healing ward, but no kills as of yet. Still looking for the first blood. Taking a look at top, Faye is uh, still holding strong up against Bims. Bims has actually been uh, pushed back and forth a little bit here. LZ has been zoning out Pickles as best he can for a long time. Pickles just trying to stay in range for that experience. And, well, yeah, right there. Didn't get that experience on that creep. So LZ is just using his hit points in his kit. This is why Tyrael is a god lane. Uh, a god tier lane. He is absolutely phenomenal at one-on-ones. Not... It's very hard to go down as a Tyrael. Let's just put it that way. Level 7 hype for both teams. Searing Assault. Uh, Searing Attack, sorry. Uh, battle Momentum Cleanse. Battle Momentum Double. Okay. And uh, Impaling Swarm. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. Here comes the second Tribute on the back of that. Static Charge. Boomerang. So it is the Boom. It will not be Static Charge and Shields and stuff. So the Boomerang is going to be used right there as well. ZP has had to deal with that extra range Hammer. Will get off his combo before he drops. But it is going to be the ZP's first blood, and I think Evil Genius is just going to let this go. Yeah, they're going to delay it as best they can, but pass the sword and maybe some damage from Faye. That's, that's going to be it. So they're going to go back to their lane and soak. Idra did not even bother. He's like, whatever. And uh, Ice Flows. So doubles the width of Kona Cold and causes each target hit to reduce its cooldown by 0.5. I actually like that talent. From War Greymon. I really actually like the, the Ice Flows. It's a nice animation. It doubles the width. It's literally almost a 180 degree arc when you cast it. Uh, it's very hard to miss, uh, whereas the other Kona Cult a little bit uh, a little bit easier to miss, so to speak. Grim Tap, Enduring Go. No problem. Level 9 advantage. It will be 10 very, very um, soon, obviously. But EG will have that slight advantage. There's going to be a very, very small window that they can use level 10 to their advantage to try to grab a kill, try to instigive somebody. And on the back of this, it will be very close to 10 for this third tribute. If they can pick this up and they get 10, they have almost a half level advantage over top of their opponents. Evil Geniuses is about to hit it and you see everyone else just backing off. This isn't a cursed tribute. There's no point in getting yourself killed, but here comes the cavalry. Level nines still for both teams. Evil Genius is looking for the 10. Looking for the 10. They got nobody soaking. That's a lie. They got Idra soaking. Idra now gets the 10 for them. Strafe, Blink Heal, Charge, Ultralis, and of course the Rain is Raider. So here comes the Ultralis. It's on the Pickles. It's going to be trying to chase him down as best he can, but it is a Tassadar. It's harder to get that kill. LZ Gamer says, I'm ready for it. There's the charge. Boom is now going to be left to his own devices from his team as the rest of everyone has now been pushed away, and it will be the tribute going the way of Evil Geniuses as they now transfer over to a bot. Level 10 hype now achieved here for uh, ESP Wild Farm, but it's a little bit too late. At this point, they do got the Archon, Hinterland Blast, Summon Water Elemental, the Army of the Dead, and Tranquility. So nothing really out of the army there. Still, with those two dead, it was enough pressure here for Evil Geniuses to get that boss. So they've stolen out the boss here from ESV. They got these giants pushing down this gate, this fort. They got a boss now up here. Everybody is in this top party lane looking for these kills. We are missing a few heroics here from Evil Geniuses, but it does not look like we have the confidence or the map positioning from Evil, uh, sort of from ESV to kind of do anything about it. ESV is, is, will defend. Evil Genius is going to melt off to other lanes to try to do a little bit of a split So They are about to hit 12, one level away from their next talent tier. And if they can actually split soak that into 13 advantage, it's uh, even harder 
for ESV to even engage on top of that. I suspected that they were going to go for their boss. Doesn't actually look to be the case. Idra's actually going to defend out bot. We're going to take some of these towers mid, so they really want that 13 as fast as they can. ESV trying to get their own experience back on track. They take down the towers, and now they're going to leave the gate because it's not worth any experience, but they lost out mid for it. Idra's now pushing into the bottom. He should actually grab this. That'll put him close to 13. As the tribute is now spawning, this will be a cursed tribute if Evil Geniuses is left to their own devices. But they're still looking for that 13 because they want that advantage. Idra is actually so far in the back, we can't get to them. And ESB, they're funneled into this little choke point. What a strafe on the back of that. Bay doing some massive damage. The Hinterland Blast is not to be denied, but there is no lethal damage really on us. It will actually just be the Tyrael go down, and they trade it out one for one. But again, the curse went the way of Evil Geniuses. There was absolutely nothing they could do. This was a massive choke point for both teams. Hinterland's Blast did good work, but it wasn't very lethal. There's still a lot of hit points. We still had a lot of healing there from Kawhi Rice with that blink heal, with the passives, with the, the gust, I assume, that he actually has. No, he took cleanse, okay. But uh, it was not nearly enough for the big pinpoints, and now on the back of this curse, ESP Wildfire, they're about to lose out this bottom. And that's gonna be level 14 hype. What is the 13? Giant Killer, Frost Shot, Rewind, Cast Aside. Rewind. We got double rewind here for Evil Geniuses. Very standard kind of stuff again. Kawhi Rice, he's going to get the critter at 16. And double polymorph with vulnerability is nothing to sneeze at. He's uh, doing well with the 2v1 here. ZP looks for that rewind, gets that combo, missed out the first one, got the second. Double kill on the back of it. Strafe was able to take home the fort as well. And that puts us at 15 now for Evil Geniuses, as they are very likely to go off to their boss now. And there's the ping. Yeah, yeah they're going to go for it because there's no one left here really to um, stop them. Like, I hate quoting Blackbeard, but sometimes, yeah, it's it's just what you got to do. And uh, we do have 13, though, here for Wildfire. A very typical Tassadar build. Once again, Prescient, probably into Dimensional Warp. We do have Thunder Strikes at level 13. Uh, so that actually does more damage instead of giving him the shield. Falstad uh, hasn't really looked that squishy. But at the same time, I haven't really um, been noticing a lot of focus on top of him. Level 13 is improved ice block for the Jaina. So she doesn't want to get jumped at all. The improved ice block just works like a regular ice block, but anybody that's near it when it expires actually does get chilled, which will increase her damage uh, when needed. Also, I believe it also increases the water on the damage because it's technically a spell for her. Relentless ice block from the Malfurion. You know. It's just, you just gotta do it. Like, they have so much of a wombo burst here from Evil Geniuses. And EG, they're actually gonna follow up this uh, boss of theirs. They're gonna look for a fight. But it doesn't look like they're actually gonna commit to it. They're so close to 16, the sword gets it. There's the critter eyes. Blood for blood, blood for blood, blood for blood. And a berserk on the back of that for the Rainer. ZPs gets the combo, takes down the Arthas. He does not live out, he does not walk away. Iacona doesn't even get off that ice block whatsoever. Wargraymon way in the back there, not really doing the things that he needs to be doing. And two team members down again for Wildfire. Puts us into a good position here for EG to go for the key. Absolutely mind-boggling the play here from evil geniuses yeah they didn't make it to finals this is third place but so far they are taking esv for a ride one keep down now at the 11 minute mark they got that two level advantage about to be two and a half as they ding into the 17 mid not even being pushed top barely even uh touched well it's missing the towers so couldn't i shouldn't actually say that but the pressures and rotations from Evil Geniuses have been very on point. ZPs is making things work with this uh, initiation from the Kerrigan, from the Tyrael. On the back of all that, they got the Shred from the Rainer. They got the Strafe from Faye. If I have to look at uh, hero damage, I'm betting it's Faye up at the top. And um, I was close. It's actually uh, Kerrigan. Kerrigan and Faye, only 2,000 between them. Uh, nowhere even close to the same. Uh, on the flip side, though, ESV, I mean, uh, 4,000, 3,000, not so much. It is the Jaina lead in the pack, which I actually find a little surprising, but uh, she does have some nice range on her spells, and she does have the mana to keep spamming them out, so to speak. This is a very dangerous situation, but we're not actually going to get on top of that point 
in time. It will be the Golem going the way now of ESV. Something finally going right for them. Here comes big damage. Hinterland blasts across Bay. After that, in Venom, she's still alive on the back of it. ZP's in the middle of everything, but he's only going to be a big target. Everybody focusing on top of him means War Greyman's going to drop. Jane is now going to be dead. That leaves us for Pickles. Great smite from LZ. Takes home 14 kills for the return of one on top of that Kerrigan. And now Bim's running for his life from these Banshees, who are about to get shredded out by these turrets, but does not matter. We weren't able to contest this Golem. Sure, it's going to take down a fort, but 14 members dead means that it's very likely a keep on the back of all this. And ESP Wildfire again just slipping a little bit more into that uh, endgame scenario where can't put a point on the board and they're not going to take this. They're not even 16. We're really trying to soak here from Bim. The passive XP is just taking away extremely slow. And if we can get 16, we'll be on the same talent tier. But EG, I mean, they're going to be well on their way to 20 by the time there's even like another team fight ready to go. Well, I have more viewers for third place game than I did for the finals. That's actually funny. <laughs> Idra is going to be on the back of this. He's going to go and pick up that tribute. Nobody here can actually contest them. Uh, so that's going to be a curse tribute next round if uh, we can't actually contest them. You know, Wildfire, they're engages. Like, they keep walking into Zer uh, Kerrigan, ZPs. The ZP Kerrigan. He's there on the front lines every time with the combo. It doesn't matter if he misses. He has another rewind ready to go. We got the cleanse here on the Brightwing as well. It's keeping her alive more often than not. You try to stun out the Kerrigan combo, he just cleanses it, and she continues moving on with it, blocking up your front line. Arthas has a lot of deaths this game, which is very weird because Arthas usually lives through everything. But, you know, he has a Malfurion. Malfurion doesn't have a lot of big upfront burst healing. He has a lot of overtime healing, just like the Brightwing here. We do got some shields on both sides, but Wow, this ambush coming in, level 19, hello back line. War Greymon gonna be a big target here, already getting chunked out. Bim into the back, had to use that arrow roll already. Kawhi Wright's now back there as well. Pickles is looking to get out of this, but it's gonna be the Arthas down. Great hinterlands again, but it's not lethal damage. One for two, for three, as Kerrigan again was the big target. Bims is gonna barrel roll. He's looking to fly away, and it looks like, no, the cast aside stops it. At the end, the Vala is not going to get the shot. Here comes the sword from LZ, and that is going to be it for the uh, Griffin. The only one to get out of that one, Iacona. He's going to live to tell the tale, but four for one again. This is a curse tribute, very likely a boss, or maybe they're just going to go straight to core. Iacona could not defend that, not for another 16 seconds, not by himself. And this is uh, this is that end game scenario that I was talking about. The end game is that ESB, if they can't bring this back, if they can't get a pick, and so far they haven't, they're going to be looking at a big golem on the back of the curse, and uh, an end game scenario is going to be coming their way. Um, I have doubts Idra can actually hold this by himself, but he does have the adrenaline rush ready. It's uh, it's enough time for LZ to get there, and now we're going to be looking for the March of Doom right up the bottom lane. And there it is. LZ picks it up. We have 30 seconds left on this curse. Uh, unfortunately, the curse not really going to mesh well with the golem. We got these catapults down here. And they have been, you know, pushing out, but it's not core damage. In fact, we don't even have the core indicator that it's taken damage on top of the map. But the lanes are continually just being pushed in. The golem's going to make its long march upwards. Uh, we still have a whole minute on the top boss, so EG is just going to go for some of these towers. Look for that level 20, which they just got. Let's take a quick look. Blink, blink, storm shield, judgment, and uh, probably a blink. I want to say triple blink here for the valley. If it's not going to be a blink, it's going to be the improved strafe just for the cool factor for ending the game. She doesn't know yet, so uh, keep an eye on that. Level 18 to 20, Golem is now putting uh, these shields down as quick as they can. You can actually now shield out the core once more here from the Tassadars. So, you know, EG, they're in a perfect position here to fight. They have perfect position for, there's the triple blink, perfect position for this end game. They're level 20. They got these blinks. They got the improved charge. I think they're just kiting backwards a little bit. And if anybody was to fall into that choke, this would have, it just would have been game right there. But uh, they're also now looking around the jungle. Looks like uh, they're not going to be camping the top boss. That's curious. If they weren't going to take that fight, I was expecting them to actually take the top boss What's and this? then look for the fight. Uh, Faye's having disconnect issues, so Valabot 
is uh, probably a bigger factor into this. Brightwing with the bribe off to the side. He's actually going to come in here with that phase shift. If there's danger, we've got the Oracle out, though. Pickles does see that the camp does get taken over. I think EG's literally just stalling, waiting for Faye to stabilize connection. Welcome you don't want to go into that with a Valabot, for sure. 100%, that's a great way to throw. It's not an Uther bot. Uh, I mean, the Valor might, might do well, but I suspect that is why we just didn't end the game. We need to make sure that we can end it. So here we go. Boss is now up. They're going to be camping it. Everybody from ESV Wildfire is just kind of on the defense. They're still two levels down. They don't have 20. I don't think they're going to get 20 anyway. And uh, they're going to check out this boss. They're going to go for the boss. They're going to go for the hype. Perfect timing. Boom gets onto it. And he's going to stay on it, too. LG Gamer does get invented out. Lots of healing coming. But the cast aside pushes him off. That will be the boss going the way of EG. LZ Gamer still up. Two DPS dead. Uh, almost a third now with Pickles about to drop. And uh, Arthas, he's, he's dead in the water. Jaina wasn't even there or decided to make a break for it early. Either way, they're being chased out by LZ, who's getting blink killed very, very slowly. Ayakona with the ice block will delay the hat trick, but this is game. Couldn't even take a kill on the back of that. 18-4, Evil Geniuses will be your third place victor here. Go for Heroes, America's Cup number eight. Congratulations to them to get those seeding points. Very likely they're already now locked in. We've had several cups here in January. And they're probably locked in for the February qualifiers uh, at the end of the month. And um, yeah, that's all she wrote. Thank you so much again for the replays, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was actually a really fun game to cast. And uh, victory screen can go the way of Evil Geniuses. It's, uh, it's a bit of a rocky history here with EG. I mean, there's been a lot of team swaps. There's been a lot of uh, team members just kind of going back and forth. I mean, EG, they performed admirably at, at BlizzCon, but it, their performance has been up and down. I know LZ Gamer was off on a cruise for a long time. They had a whole bunch of subs, and you know their performance week to week is up and down. But they fought, finished with a solid third over top of ESP Wildfire. They get those extra seeding points. As I said, they're very likely going to be included in the January finals. But, you know, Cloud9 Monster, Cloud9 Maelstrom, um, very strong stuff. They take home first, it will be Glorious second, Evil Genius is third, and now ESV Wildfire, fourth place. No real shame in that. Lots of seeding points. Top four will move on to join the other teams in ESL Major League, which is Symbiote, Vortex, Barrel Boys, and Murloc Inc., I believe. So, who knows? At the end of all this, EG might actually get uh, you know, entered. They might actually qualify. They have a good chance at $5,000, but uh, it's good to see Idra, Faye, and LZ, the big core of them, coming out strong. It's, uh, it's definitely good to see them put a win on the board. And that means we are now officially done the stream. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. More viewers here than for the finals, which is really funny. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. I've been Forco Jester. Find me out there, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. I'm going to be putting everything on YouTube tomorrow in a playlist. Uh, so you, if you follow me on the Twitter, you'll get to see all the rest of the games. Hopefully next week I'll have a partner, but I'll let you guys know uh, out there in the social sphere as well. Have a fantastic night. We will see you guys in the Nexus. And next week, we go for Heroes Cup number nine.